Guyana's leader is presently the chairman of the Caribbean community, CARICOM, for 2017. Under the chairmanship of President David Granger, the country hosted the 28th Intercessional Meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government on February 16 and 17. The two-day meeting saw representatives from the 15 member states of CARICOM sequestered away to discuss pressing issues on crime and security, international relations and economic development in the region. This week's edition, we take a look at Guyana's role in CARICOM, the challenges faced by CARICOM and how it has shaped the region during the 44 years of its existence. I am Tiffany Rogers and this is Guyana 411. <laughs> Welcome back. The decision to establish the Caribbean Community CARICOM was made in April 1973 at the 8th Heads of Government Conference of CARIFTA, the Caribbean Free Trade Association, right here in Georgetown, Guyana. The establishment of CARICOM sought to integrate member states' economies, coordinate the region's foreign policy, and foster functional cooperation in health, education, and other human and social development sectors. On July 4, 1973, in Trinidad and Tobago, four heads of state from Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, and Barbados signed the Treaty of Chagaramas to establish the Caribbean community, CARICOM. The leaders were seen as pioneers of the future. Current chairman of the CARICOM and president of Guyana, David Granger, notes. The four founding fathers, Barbados's Earl Barrow, Guyana's Forbes Burnham, Jamaica's Michael Manley and Trinidad and Tobago's Eric Williams, who brought forth the Caribbean community 44 years ago, were men of discernment and determination. They were the courageous pioneers of the future. They were not craven prisoners of the past. They were not prisoners of prejudice and petty jealousies. The founding fathers of our great movement were keen to protect the emergent new states from the perils of economic marginalization. Theirs was a time when regional integration communities such as the European Economic Community, the Latin American Free Trade Association, the Central American Common Market, and the emergent East African Economic Community had begun to sprout from the rubble of the post-war empires. The worldwide trends were clear, integrate or disintegrate, combine or collapse, merge or be submerged in a sea of strife. Our founding fathers recognized that given the deformed character of our colonial economies and the small size of our markets, integration would allow for a larger and safer market for a louder voice in negotiation with other countries and regions, and for a stronger hand to bring together our scattered states. Following the formation of CARICOM, 15 states joined the community, with Haiti being the last to join CARICOM in July 2002. The regional body also saw five states signing on as associate members between July 1991 to July 2003. The community created four pillars under which it is governed economic integration, coordination of foreign policy, functional cooperation, and security collaboration. Throughout its formation, CARICOM remained committed to its aim for the transformation of the region into a common market. Secretary General of CARICOM, Erwin LaRock, maintains that the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, remains the most viable option for the region to achieve this goal. The revised treaty of Chagaramas outlines the requirements for establishing the CARICOM single market and economy, the CSME. Our community has identified the CSME as the best vehicle to promote our overall economic growth and development. Considerable progress has been made in implementing the CSME. This can be seen in the legal and institutional measures and mechanisms to support a free movement of goods, services, skills, and cross-border establishment of businesses. 
CARICOM member states joined on to the revised Treaty of Chagaramas in 2001. In January 2006, the single market component of the CSME came into effect. Ambassador Laroque notes that even the Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ, has supported these efforts. That work has been supported by the rulings of the Caribbean Court of Justice, which is providing the legal certainty so necessary for the operations of the CSME. Such community jurisprudence becomes even more important as we deepen our economic and commercial relations. To lend credence to the CSME and the free movement component, several member of states have unified their travel documents across CARICOM. 44 years following the establishment of CARICOM, the regional body has managed to build a sense of community, but there remains much to be done to intensify regional integration. The spirit of Chagoramas is not a ghost, it is not a jumbie of a dead project. It is the vital breath of life that inspires us to intensify regional integration. The Founding Fathers had that inspiration, the inspiration to see the need for integration and the motivation to establish this great movement. They have entrusted the happiness of our citizens and the prosperity of our community into our hands. We are today the trustees of this legacy. We must bequeath to our progeny a more prosperous region than we inherited from our progenitors. As a founder of CARICOM, Guyana has an integral stake in the continued success of the regional body to champion the region's issues on the international scene and ensure it achieves its ultimate aim of regional integration. This year, the chairmanship of CARICOM rests with President David Granger. The post is rotated every half year between the 15 member states. This year marks the midpoint of CARICOM's five-year strategic plan for the period 2015 to 2019. Current chairman of CARICOM, President David Granger, notes that this strategic plan is foundational in the community's reform process. Agriculture, particularly food and nutrition security, and export development plays an integral part in building the region's economic flexibility and stabilizing and sustaining economic growth and development. Guyana's agriculture potential has long since been recognized as becoming the breadbasket of the Caribbean, with agriculture contributing about 25% of its gross domestic product. In fact, Guyana has led regional responsibility for agriculture, agriculture diversification, and food security, including the Regional Transformation Program, RIP, and bananas in CARICOM's virtual cabinet. President Granger believes that CARICOM has the capability to meet its food security needs but requires cross-sectorial cooperation. Food security will ensure the health and nutritional benefits for our people, earn foreign exchange, and eliminate the bloated bill for importing food. Ensuring regional food security is a cross-sectoral task involving cooperation in agriculture, finance, health, and nutrition, and infrastructure, among other sectors. Belize, Guyana, and Suriname, the community's three mainland states, are together bigger than Germany, bigger than Japan. We have the land. We need to commit ourselves to the task of feeding ourselves. Food security can be advanced by the full utilization of our lands for large-scale investment in agriculture and agro-processing, and by dismantling barriers to regional trade in agricultural products. Guyana's involvement in CARICOM goes beyond its regional responsibility. Some of the areas that the country contributes to include but are not limited to security and energy. President Granger notes that transnational criminal threats demand multinational functional cooperation. At the 28th Intercessional Meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government, Guyana presented two key draft documents in the relation to the region's security. What we're looking at is um, a legal instrument that would allow for um, the assets recovery, assets that have been transferred to another jurisdiction by ill-gotten means. Um, it would first be a legal instrument, a treaty, and that would have to be enacted in the domestic legislations, as you've pointed out. Um, negotiations for that are very well advanced. It has um, received the attention of the Council for uh, Crime and Security, the Consulate, and uh, latterly by the Legal Affairs Committee, which is, which is comprised of Tunis General, and hence you would have heard that announcement coming from your post-cabinet briefing. 
Um, I do not, uh, we are at this point in time, we are not yet at the position to say that we're going to adopt this instrument at the sitting, but we are very well advanced um, uh, in, in getting that done. Our hope was to have done that, but I have to admit that um, some of these legal instruments require very careful examination, and that's where we are. Gan is also seen as a leader in the region's efforts towards a sustainable energy pathway with its Great Economy Initiative. Last year, the Ghana Energy Agency joined with the CARICOM Secretariat to host an energy roundtable discussion with stakeholders in the regional private sector and regional and international institutions. The discussions sought to provide opportunities for synchronizing the regional and national plans towards a sustainable energy pathway. The discussions also highlighted how Guyana's energy sector could benefit from opportunities and synergies from the regional strategic planning process and action plans. More recently, Ghana moved recommendations for the signing of the draft agreement to establish the Caribbean Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, CCREEE, at the recently concluded intersessional meeting of heads of government here in Georgetown. The CARICOM region has committed to continue working on energy to ensure access to affordable, adequate, safe, and clean energy products necessary for the development of member of states and for the consolidation of the CSME. The CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, was established in 2006 after 13 years of deliberation. The CSME seeks to enable free movement of goods, services, capital and labour, all while increasing intra-regional, cross-border trade and investment and improving the region's international competitiveness. Ten years after the formation of the CSME, only the single market aspect has attained some success especially the free movement of goods, labor, and services. However, the regional heads are still to facilitate the single economy aspect. As many member states grapple with low growth, high debt, and the consequent pressure of the fiscal position, Secretary General of CARICOM, Ambassador Erwin LaRock, maintains that the CSME is the best vehicle to promote all economic growth and development in the region. At the 28th Intercessional Meeting of Conference of Heads of Government, Ambassador LaRock notes the review of the CSME is timely. With all that is before us, it is relevant and timely for this meeting to consider a comprehensive review of the CSME as agreed to last July. Ideally, a review of the CSME must not only be about what has been done or not done and what might have, what might have been the constraining factors. It should also be about the impact and how it has measured up to intent and expectations and therefore how the shortcomings might be addressed. Outgoing Chairman of CARICOM and Prime Minister of Dominica, Roosevelt Scarrett, notes a greater effort is needed by all to address the advancement of CSME. Of particular concern is the inability of the Legal Affairs Committee comprising of our Attorneys General to come together to deal with critical agreements with respect to both the CSME and regional security. In CARICOM's Quasi Cabinet, Barbados has regional responsibility for the CSME. Barbadian Prime Minister Frendel Stewart also laments the inadequacies in the regional governance structure to meet and address pressing issues like the CSME. The CSME is too important to be left to chance and heads of government need to recommit to regional projects, Prime Minister Stewart notes. A recommitment by heads and uh, a working out of the necessary formula to ensure that decisions taken are implemented. This is an old problem going back to the very foundations of, of, of CARICOM and we are still working at it, but uh, uh, I think the, the project is so important that we have to continue to make sure that the expectations raised when we embarked on this journey in 1973 uh, are realized because the people of the Caribbean need to feel in their everyday goings out and comings in the effect of being not just citizens of one country but citizens of a regional civilization. The CSME is essential to prevent the economic emasculation of the region and CARICOM must expedite the implementation of the single market economy, current chairman and president of Guyana, David Granger, stresses. The CSME has the potential to enhance private sector growth and competitiveness 
by providing access to a larger pool of resources, facilitating the movement of human capital, catalyzing the establishment of regional businesses, and encouraging the free movement of goods. The CSME must not be allowed to become a victim of equivocation and procrastination. This year, CARICOM will be celebrating 44 years as a regional body. There is no denying that since its formation, CARICOM has been able to advance critical issues that many of its small member states could not have advanced on their own. But CARICOM still has to move from being perceived as a talk shop and do more to strengthen its effectiveness in the region. Multilateral bodies like CARICOM are threatened by a rise in global nationalism. Many heads of state of CARICOM believe that now more than ever, the community must advance in regional integration movement. Outgoing chairman and prime minister of Dominica, Roosevelt Scarrett, believes that it is in the individual interest of each member of state to work as a collective to achieve the ultimate aim of integration. We must prepare ourselves to confront this era of uncertainty in global affairs with a flexibility and innovativeness built on a solid platform of integration economic cooperation, human and social development, security cooperation, and foreign policy coordination. To do less would be to deny the people of our community the opportunity of living in a viable, prosperous, and safe society. Gauging the impact of integration is an integral part of the reform process underway in the community. That reform is driving the change in the way CARICOM does business and aims to make the Secretariat, the regional institutions, and the member states more accountable in the conduct of their roles as implementing partners in the integration process. Key to that accountability is the establishment of a monitoring and evaluation and reporting system based on the principles of results-based management. With a half million US dollar grant from the Caribbean Development Bank, for which I thank them, a consulting firm has been working with us in developing a gender-sensitive CARICOM results-based management system. That system includes performance scorecards as we seek to ensure that we use an evidence-based approach that will focus on results and allow us to track the progress of our integration. We'll be able to judge through indicators just what we have achieved and what are the roadblocks deterring us. It will foster a results-oriented culture aimed at increasing the pace of regional integration and its impact on the lives of the people of our region. CARICOM's long-term viability is also challenged by the community's need to secure the region to promote social and economic progress. Secretary General of CARICOM, Ambassador Erwin LaRocque, notes that the community's best effort to address its challenges is being hindered by failure to deliver rapid results not only in security but other critical areas. Our crime and security agenda is affected by this. Crime and security is not just a national issue, but a regional one. The critical regional legal instruments that we are awaiting finalization would assist in the battle at the national level. The time is past due for the outstanding matters to be concluded with a degree of urgency. Winning the battle for a safe and secure society brings with it more opportunity for economic growth and development. It will also provide a boost for one of our major economic sectors, tourism. This sector is on, the, on one of the prime drivers of economic growth, attracting more in major investment, creating jobs, and boosting the creative industries, among others. Despite its challenges, CARICOM is working to enhance the socio-economic development. Conference like the recent 28th Intercessional Meeting hosted here in Georgetown is where CARICOM heads meet to reaffirm their commitment to the community and guide it further along its path to sustainable development for the ultimate benefit of the people. This has brought us to the end of another edition of Guyana 411. Remember this and all other GINA programs can be viewed on our YouTube channel. You can also get updates from our Facebook page. I am Tiffany Rogers. Have a great week ahead.